Your life is a gift. Everyone that is still alive has a testimony. The purpose of this message is simply to share hope. Hope that no matter what you are facing in life, you will survive. I was in Baltimore, Maryland touring with a major recording artist when all of this happened. We were supposed to stay at the Hyatt Hotel downtown by the harbor, but all the rooms were taken because of a sporting event that was happening the same night. So we had to stay in West Baltimore in a rough area of town. It really didn't make a difference to me because I've been in hotels all across the country, good and bad. Uh, when I check into a hotel, I kind of have a pattern of doing things no matter where I am. I drop off my luggage, I joke around with the band for a little bit, and I go to the nearest gas station to get some junk food, Gatorade or Waffle House, IHOP, whatever is open. Then I come back and relax. This night was no different. I did the same thing. I walked outside and headed toward the gas station, which was about three blocks away. As I walked through the second block, I could see six guys standing on the corner, talking to each other, looking in my direction. I really didn't even pay them any mind and just kept walking towards the store. Just then I realized I left my wallet in my room. I turned around and went back to the hotel and got my wallet. My best friend Liddell, who was a drummer that was on my band at the time, told me to stop going places by myself. I told him I was good like I normally do and went back to the store. I walked past the same group of guys and they were watching me again. I continued to the store and got my usual Gatorade, candy, junk food and headed back to the hotel. When I came past that same block, the same guys immediately just came towards me. Strangely, the whole street was clear and no one was on it like I saw just a few minutes before. By this time, I figured out that they were a gang and the leader came towards me and he said, what you doing out here, homie? I just turned to him and said, I'm chilling, bro. And just kept walking. Um, they circled around me and he said to me, what's up with that phone? At this point, I knew it, it had nothing to do with the phone or nothing that I said or did, or did um, had anything to do with what he was asking me. I figured they were going to rob me, so I didn't even respond. I just told him it was off and put it back in my pocket. Really, it was off, though. Sprint had cut me off for being over my account spending limit. He walked closer to me and right in my face, and he said, well, you got to roll out, homie. At that point, he pulled out a 45 caliber gun from his jacket and he pointed it directly at me at point blank range. I didn't even have time to react. I heard the first shot and saw a bright light from the gun that blinded me and I fell immediately to the ground. He stood over top of me and pointed the gun at me again. I said, peace out, homie. He fired seven more shots into my body. Instantly at that moment, just for a second, I saw an angel appear in front of me. The angel looked transparent and was kneeling down literally with both arms in front of him as if every bullet was going through the angel. I knew it couldn't have been a figment in my imagination because I had no time to even think about this. I had no time to think about anything other than the pain I was feeling from every single bullet that was going in my body. When he finished shooting me, his other boys picked up shell casings that had fallen to the ground around me and they laughed and joked with each other about how they just smoked me. Right then I heard God speak to me and tell me not to move. It was really strange because I wanted to yell, I wanted to scream, I wanted to breathe. I wanted to know if I was alive, but I couldn't do it. They were still looking at me. So I just laid there and, and didn't breathe. My eyes were still open, but they were fixed, even though I felt pain all across my body. For the first time in my life, I felt no pain from even not breathing which was the strangest feeling I've ever felt. That's how I knew God was right there with me. As I continued to hold my breath, waiting for them to leave, I felt the blood all around me. When they finally ran to the car, I drove off. They drove off at full speed. I took my first breath. I remember softly yelling, Oh God, God. As I looked around me and saw the pool of blood and holes in my shirt, I tried to stand up, but I couldn't. I couldn't feel my legs. So I dragged myself off of the street and onto the sidewalk, literally crawling. 
I tried to flag down cars to stop them, to stop and help me, but nobody would stop. People literally slowed down and looked at me and kept going. It was literally only me and God. I had a moment where I had my life flash before my eyes. I thought about everyone that loved me. I thought about my own funeral. I thought about the things that I should have said to my family and the friends that I didn't tell. Just then I remembered that I had my cell phone still with me. My hand was completely covered in blood, but I still managed to dial 911. When the operator came online, I told her that I had been shot and she asked me where I was. Thankfully, I was lying right next to a street sign so I could give her an idea where I was. She tried to keep me talking, but I really couldn't because I was losing my breath every minute that went past. Eventually, the police showed up, about five officers. One walked toward me. He asked me my name, how old I was, and that was the end of the conversation. After that, they drew lines around me and put up police tape and crime scene tape and set a perimeter. This is when my faith really had to step in, though. Even though all around me it looked like death, I had to speak life and I began praying. There was nothing I could do but that. The ambulance got there eventually and seven minutes later they loaded me in. Immediately they began cutting off my clothes and hooking me up to all kinds of machines. This was the first time that I actually saw the gunshot wounds with my eyes and at that moment tears began to flow from my eyes. My body just looked dead looked like I shouldn't have been alive, but I was. I heard the EMT say to her partner, I don't think he's going to make it. It hurt to hear those words coming from her, but I, I tried to hold on to life. By the time I got to the hospital, they rushed me down the hall into surgery. When I arrived in the room, it was like the strangest scene I ever seen. The room was lined with nurses, doctors, police, other hospital employees looking at me in disbelief almost as if what they heard on the radio, my condition, they were stunned that I was alive. The lead doctor whispered in my ear, I'm about to give you some anesthesia to put you asleep for the surgery. Can you sign this paper for me? Oddly enough, I was able to sign it. It did pretty good. I did so good that the doctor joked and said, for, some, for someone who's got shot all these times, you sure do have a good signature. Right at that moment, I looked in front of me and I saw people standing at the door and I saw people surrounding around me and I saw that same angel that same angel that I saw on the street I saw standing in front of me with his arms folded looking at me nodding his head as if to say everything is going to be alright right then I felt a peace upon me that relaxed my breathing and I fell asleep when I opened my eyes I saw tubes all around me I heard beeping sounds from all the machines I saw bandages across my chest. I thought to myself, I'm alive. The first thing that I thought was how in the world was I alive? There was a nurse standing to my left and she looked at me right in the eye and said, you made it, you made it, Marcus. A doctor came in the room and told me I was lucky to be alive. I knew luck had nothing to do with it. He proceeded to tell me that he performed an eight-hour surgery on me and removed half of my stomach, my whole spleen, half of my small intestine, reattached my colon and removed half of my pancreas. I just looked at him in disbelief, but I believed him. I found out later that my doctor, he found God through my surgery. He acknowledged that it was not possible that he did the surgery by himself. Today I can walk. I had to learn how to do that all over again. Today I can play the piano even though I lost the feeling in my right hand. Today I can eat even with a half of a stomach. Today I can walk in peace because God gave me peace during the most chaotic time of my life. Today I know that God is a healer. Mark 9.23 says all things are possible to him that believes. Do you believe? I know that I do. I encourage everyone that hears my voice to do God now and not later. A common misconception is that you need to clean yourself up before you come to God. 
But the truth is, you just have to come to God and he will change you. God bless you all. God keep you. Remember that God is sovereign and bigger than every problem and every situation.